How's it going, everybody? Uh, thanks for coming. I love presenting at my fifth breakpoint here. It's been a long time coming, and we're really changing the space now. Uh, my name is Dr. Blox. We'll go with Dr. Blox, and I'm CTO of Switchboard. And we've been an Oracle provider for Solana for about five years now. And you know, in 2020 and 2021, 2022, uh, there was a very different model for how to connect information to blockchains. And we'll get to how this has changed over the years now. So really, when we started Switchboard, there was only um, a single method that people really uh, used to push information from off-chain uh, to on-chain. And when you think about why you need uh, oracles, it's really because you have a large source of information that's actually off-chain, that is actually from the internet. And when you think about information from the internet versus information from on-chain, there's actually not a clear way to come to consensus on what that information is. If I am pulling some data from a website, how can I actually verify what this is? And this price is honest and true, and actually a strong and legitimate price. Uh, so what we build is something called oracles, which is a consensus mechanism for information. This can be information from the internet, information from actually first party sources that actually produce this information. But Switchboard actually turned this a bit to be a platform to build your own oracles. And you can actually make a layout of how you push and transform this information on the blockchain. So Switchword is actually the first Oracle platform where you can build your own information workflows and sources. So with that, we actually launched our push Oracle in 2021, but they've been around since 2017 with the advent of Chainlink or so. And the first two years, we were doing between 3 to 7% of Solana's traffic. This, of course, pushing this data constantly, even when it's not used, is highly inefficient and unsustainable. And with that, we actually had this advent of what we call a pull Oracle, which you pull this information on-chain when the user actually needs it. What we're coming to now is just-in-time oracles. And when I actually talk about this, we're talking about this whole execution environment for when you only pull information when somebody has already used it. So you don't actually have this flow of needing to constantly update this information or even letting the users uh, be subject to choosing the ordering. So yeah, in the push model era, 2017 to 2022, this was very expensive because a lot of this was before the advent of Solana. Some of this and most of this was actually in the EVM slash Ethereum days, in which Chainlink was trying to push information for a lot of uh, you know, uh, first party assets on chain, but because it's so expensive, it could be hundreds of dollars of gas feeds a day, maybe even thousands. Uh, they actually had a heartbeat interval of 30 minutes. This is fine for things like lending, because lending is actually over collateralized. And if you can actually make a system that you can check the volatility of how far things can actually manage to be pushed in a 30 minute period and it's over collateralized, there's actually limited risk to doing this. So when you have oracles and it's actually at this cadence, you can do it for certain types of DeFi, but it's focused on lending. And we don't get to any, many more derivatives other than maybe uh, start of the add-in of early perps. And there are applications like GMX that found ways around this. And when Oracle started to speed up and we started seeing updates per minute, GMX actually implied a system of they'll take the worst price before and after a trade, making sure that or, um, people could executing trades could not exactly front run the Oracle's price. Then we get to the poll model, where we actually delegate the responsibility of pushing the information of oracles to the user. And in this way, it's much more practical for uh, oracles to actually operate, because actually, even on Solana, there was getting to the point that some oracle uh, uh, platforms were stipending their oracles $500,000 a month just to keep information up to date unsustainable for any uh, platform that's pushing information. Uh, and also, if nobody's using the information between requests, it's uh, wasted money and wasted block space. So with this poll model, it allows these users to actually request the price be updated only when they want to use it. And there's actually an off-chain consensus layer for where all this information goes. And when it's ready to be pulled on, the user pulls it on. Uh, beyond that, uh, beyond having just a consensus there, since Switchboard is a permissionless platform, we actually employed this new model that we called an on-demand oracle, where the information isn't only just brought from an, another layer onto the blockchain that you want at that specific time, but the oracles actually do the work to go fetch the information right when the user is requesting it. And with this, it becomes a lot more practical to start running some of these more high fidelity applications. So if something like a perp dex, you can actually start doing this at, you know, sub five seconds uh, for the whole flow to get this information. But really, this is still not competitive with centralized uh, perpetuals or centralized 
uh, uh, DEXs even, so or uh, uh, spot prices, excuse me. Uh, so when you're looking at these future platforms, when you're looking at actually competitive, or you could say prop perpetuals that we're going to get to soon, or uh, prop AMMs for spot prices, there's a whole different flow you have to employ. But this really did open up the bar for having something that's uh, pretty competitive for use case for uh, per perpetuals on chain, or even margined uh, spot. So now we're getting to this whole year where everyone's talking about prop AMMs. It's prop AMMs everywhere, and they're taking over all the spot traffic. So what actually is a prop AMM? You know, for some uh, context here, many of you are going to know exactly what an AMM is. You have uh, basically a book. It's not an order book, but it's basically a market that has two uh, uh, treasuries of assets, one in a base token, one in a growth token. And you can actually get the price of these tokens based off, of, based off of the curve or the levels of these pools. And as one side of the pool depletes, the other increases, this changes the price. This still is not great for price discovery since it's algorithmic and not actually what a market maker is willing to quote for all of these services. So when people actually deploy liquidity, it is still mostly off-chain. Now we're getting to this point where we have prop AMMs where people are saying constantly what they're willing to quote and they're actually pushing their own Oracle updates every single slot. Although this is very expensive, we've come to the point where Oracle updates are extremely cheap. We've optimized this down to uh, 20 or so compute units on-chain and if you actually push this every slot, you can get up to about 70,000 to 120,000 compute units per asset. And if you can actually expand on this to um, more compressed updates, you can get a little more advantageous. But even so, with this, we're seeing a lot, a lot of updates. And if you're actually going to be expanding to all the prop AMMs coming up, this is millions and millions in the epoch that are going to be spent just to support a few prop AMMs. So is this really sustainable as we're going forward for Solana if everyone's going to have a fair, fair and balanced chance to actually make these applications? So now we talk about how we're limited in uh, Oracle updates. When you're actually submitting an Oracle update for these prop AMMs, they're trying to squeeze these prices and price updates as tight as possible. If you're trading on the New York Stock Exchange, they're talking about 50 microseconds for price updates in a change. If Solana or any decentralized system is going to compete with that, we need to be coming to that as our uh, golden bar or golden standard. So we come to this one, uh, one slot problem in which we have a single leader that has multiple Oracle updates they're seeing. Why would they not be motivated just to drop all the other transactions that are in a uh, less than beneficial spot for them to execute their own trades? Why would they just not use this, the single best price update that they get? So when you're actually getting uh, updates from a prop AMM, it's not incentivized for them to do more than one Oracle update per slot because these validators can basically freeform, uh, freeformly drop whatever Oracle updates they do not like. So enter Jito Bam. Now we have actual marketplace for ordering transactions. This is going to be coming very soon to Solana. Jita is just finishing up uh, their execution of this, and I think it's going to be a very big revolution of how we order blocks and how we can verifiably order blocks to prevent sandwiching. Um, now, if you can actually uh, verifiably order blocks, you can have multiple updates in a slot. So this is intra-slot price updates. So even though uh, Solana slots are 200 milliseconds, we can actually do price, price updates um, at any point in the block. Now we can actually get to the microsecond level of pricing and trading. So when you have these solutions like double zero that have actually really optimized the networking layer between all of the validators, we're really seeing the benefits of this coming into fruition because now we no longer care about the uh, distance between when slots finish. If you can get a price update before the, Oracle, um, uh, bef before the next Oracle update actually finishes, it's still very, very meaningful for you. Uh, we're running out of time, so I'm going to speed through the rest of these. But anyways, when Switchboard is created, we're enabled to make all these new mechanisms for people to push these prices. If you want to get the nav price of your own treasuries, you can do that now. And that's exactly what Kiel did for uh, instantiating their $2.5 billion uh, fund for MakerDAO on Solana. They've actually used Switchboard to uh, uh, get their nav price. Uh, you use this for pr prediction markets, just how Jupiter is using this with the Cauchy data on Solana. And now we're doing this for prop AMMs. And with Switchboard actually doing their own uh, BAM plugin, now people can freeformly um, add their own Oracle updates into the BAM layer to not spam the network and only put Oracle transactions right before trades actually execute and do this verifiably to not uh, waste their own money. Uh, so this is kind of the summary of this bes bespoke tactics that BAM will actually employ for Oracle updates. And Really, this whole block auction mechanism employs a whole new floor for actually ordering and pricing how much these updates are actually worth in value for making these trades. 
Um, you know, some of the key takeaways here. The evolution of oracles has gone from a push-pull to back to a very efficient push put oracle or uh, program-based. And now with Gito Bam, we can make a platform for people actually executing oracle updates just before trades. So be as efficient as possible, as timely as possible. Uh, yeah. Now, it's really interesting now because with the advent of prop AMMs, price discovery is for the first time ever moving on-chain rather than off-chain. And now it's very interesting because now people that are quoting prices might look on-chain or on Solana first before even a sex. If any questions here, please message me. I am Dr. Blocks on Telegram or switchword XYZ. And please look at our docs and message with any questions. Thank you so much.